This is a film I made about a um, gambling addict. It was a 90-minute film. Planet 12, which was the film beforehand, was the first time. I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm what they, I'm, I think what they call in the, in the field a late adopter. I'm like the last guy to try new technology out. And Planet 12, I actually was the first time I'd handled what at the time I think was a PD-150. Um, and I just, I absolutely fell in love with it. I mean I, I mean, I know there's at least one deep director of photography in the room. He probably hates me saying that. But, but I love shooting my own observational films because you just can't do it with the cameraman now. And this film, a lot of this film took place in this, this guy <coughs> was a 52-year-old gambling addict who lived in a hostel for men in Bedford. And most of the film takes place in his room, which you'll see is quite small. And so you just couldn't have a cameraman, a sound recordist, and me kind of there. There actually physically wasn't enough room. And um, so his name is James. And in a way, this film was this kind of reaction to what we've just been talking about, because th this film is really just about a man trying to come to terms with his life, his broken life at the age of 52. There's no big idea I'm trying to get across. Um, uh, you know, I said to him, I'll show you the film beforehand, and you can comment on it. I can't give you editorial control, but if there's stuff you really feel strongly about, uh, I'm, you know, I'm sure I can be amenable to it. And sure enough, I added a little something that he really felt strongly about. Um, so it, th this was very liberating for me after what we've talked a bit about. You know, I, I think this is virtually my best film. I really like this film a lot. And it was partly because I freed myself from you know, making films about big ideas. Um, and it really is just a portrait of James. It's about my relationship with James. And the film is called The Confession for two reasons. One, early on in the film, he said to me, Henry, I'm using your film as a suicide note. And I'm going to kill myself at the end of this film, which we'll get to in a moment, I'm sure. And this film is my way of explaining <coughs> to everybody I've hurt why I've done what I've done. I really feel this film sort of saved James's life. Because it obviously became quite an issue that he had said to me, I'm going to kill myself. Uh, and then at the end of it, um, I said to him, you know, James, I'm not going to show this film if I think there's any, even the remotest chance that you're going to use this film, as you said a few months ago, to kill yourself. 
And I also said, I, you know, A, I have to feel, A, I have to tell the BBC about this. B, uh, I have to feel confident, and they will have to feel confident that you're not going to do it. And C, I said, you, I want you to go into therapy, and I will, I'll pay for six sessions of therapy. And I think this film changed his life. Because he, one of the, the other reasons he did this film is he said, I've tried everything, and maybe this, this will uh, help me. And I think it did. I think the film became a form of therapy for him. And I had done some therapy, uh, and so I kind of knew. And in a way, therapy is a bit like having a film made on you. You know, you sort of, and, and I mean, probably the best therapy ever. A friend of mine said after this film, Henry, you should stop being a filmmaker. And what did he say? You should become, um, oh, he had a wonderful, funny phrase. Anyways, like, you know, for, you know, you find celebrities and make films on them and show it to them and charge them lots of money because it is, a, seeing yourself, a film made on you, is a wonderful mirror. And that's what therapy is. It's a mirror. Um, and, that, you know, and, I, and he ended up, I then got, I got him and Brian, who you'll see him in a moment, um, to some community and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, James is now doing, he hasn't gambled in sort of two years and is doing much better. So I think, oddly, oddly enough, this film you know, it was a great, was a great, uh, uh, was a great help to him. And we, be, we became incredibly close. I mean, he's now one of my closest friends, and we're uh, in contact all the time. And, and, I, and I think freeing myself from making a film about big ideas for a change and just making an incredibly intimate film about a person trying to make sense of his life, I just absolutely loved it. And I think the film is much more, you know, we talked about no commentary. There's, it's a 90-minute film, and there are nine sentences of commentary in it. But you know, it, it just freed, and it's a much, you know, it's a very visual film. You know, it, feel, it feels quite languid in the context. And there are plenty of people that would say it's a rather languid film. Um, certainly, some of the reviews did. But it, um, you know, it could be much more visual as a result. You know, just watching him get dressed in the morning and seeing him go on the train and walk outside the casino. You know, you don't have to. You know, I think the old Henry. I come from quite a verbal, literary background. Um, you know, and I interviewed him about losing his money and all that stuff, and I had a very good editor, and you know, you just see him slumped in his chair on the train ride home with music. The music, I had the fantastic um, composer for the longest time who's now won an Academy Award, so sadly I can't afford him anymore. But, uh, you, know, the, you know, just that music with him slumped at, you know, at one in the morning or whatever time it is, coming home from Southampton, you know, just says it all.